I think what the most fundamental thing that I learned comparing what I learned in Afghanistan and Mexico is the building of community relations between your security forces and your civilian uh, level of governance and your local population. You know, in, in Mexico, uh, there is a massive problem of trust. And the same thing goes for Afghanistan. I think that almost every meeting I went to was done over the barrel of a gun in Afghanistan. It's all about building trust. And in this photo, you're seeing an Afghan soldier searching a, a civilian in an area that's infested with insurgents. And I think that the issue became not only the civilians trusting the government, but the, tr the government trusting civilians. So it was never about one giving to the other. It was one almost fighting each other. And that sort of tore down the entire social fabric of what they were trying to do in that area. And the issue of human rights. So what happens is, is the government or the security forces that go into an area that are ordered into an area, just like they have been in Mexico and many cities, is like these two detainees in Afghanistan. And uh, I think there's different specific issues of human rights that's going on in each country. But the issue is, is if you launch a bunch of security forces who are untrained or unprepared for the situation, like many of the Afghan troops are, and many Mexican security forces as well, is you start having many issues surrounding human rights. Imprisonment without trial. Uh, torture, uh, not understanding the laws that you're implementing or the social fabric you're trying, instead of building social fabric, you're destroying it. So you have situations like this where these Afghan soldiers are arresting or detaining uh, an Afghan civilian in an area right near where actually Mullah Omar started the Taliban. And what ends up happening is this guy is suspected. Very little evidence. They just felt like he might be an insurgent. And I think that the treatment of people when they're suspects and having basic human rights can be, there could be a, a line where you take them in and say, hey, let's, we want to question you, you just want to make sure who you are. And then you sort of blindfold them and then there maybe there are abuses that totally sever that relationship. And then you have your civilian population siding with the other side. In this case, their side would be the Taliban and Mexico would be siding with some of the criminals or the cartels. And then I think when you deploy security forces in an area, you need to understand that uh, unless they're well trained and understand working in urban environments where there are a lot of civilians, is you have a situation like this. This is a, an Afghan civilian who was shot in crossfire when the Taliban attacked uh, the uh, government forces. And in the ensuing ambush, he, he was killed. This has happened a lot in Mexico as well, as civilians caught in the crossfire. And this, this is probably the situation which degrades any sort of government governance building or image of, of a good image of a government sort of completely collapses if your security forces are untrained and this happens. Which leads us kind of into more about Mexico and understanding social issues that relate to the United States. Uh, this is a woman who's from Chiapas. She's in Nogales, Sonora. She's in a shelter for, de uh, for immigrants who've just been deported from the United States. So and she comes from the, one of the poorest states in Mexico and she was lost in the desert for six days in Arizona. It was arrested by border patrol and sent back. And she was there simply for one reason, because there's no work in Mexico. And I think that sort of driving policy on, on things where they, providing jobs can be one of the best social infrastructure uh, pieces of the puzzle that you can build. And which leads to sort of understanding what's going on in Mexico. And in this photograph, you see a number of bullet holes through the windshield of a truck in Cuyacan, Sinaloa, with a, a Mexican soldier in front of it. I think what you're seeing here is that uh, these are not gangbangers in the corner fighting over a corner selling little dime bags of pot. Those are, those are, those are double taps. So it's a special kind of shooting that very professional assassins use. These are highly complex organizations that make billions of dollars. And of course, all of us have heard of the remarkable and tragic body count in Mexico. And what you're looking at here is getting back to sort of the comparison of the use of human rights. And uh, these aren't just street corner shootings in some inner city part of America. These men have their hands and feet bound. They were abducted by one cartel. They were probably taken somewhere, maybe tortured, maybe pushed for information. And then uh, they were thrown bound onto the territory between the two cartels and then executed publicly as a message to intimidate society. Uh, this is Luis. I think that understanding sort of the social issues and the, and the lack of social infrastructure to support young men who have no opportunity in life fall into violence or drugs or going being imprisoned and maybe going to jail and Instead of having treatment, it's all about punishment and the whole issue of punishment versus treatment and trying to rebuild people's lives after they maybe go down the path of crime. And I think that one of the big social issues that's very important in any country that's experiencing conflict is 
uh, treatment of mental, the mentally ill. I think that the mental health issue is massive in any country that experienced extreme violence on the scales of Afghanistan and Mexico. Uh, and, and this is a woman who was found beating herself in Juarez, and when the police found her, they brought her to a, a privately run shelter uh, run by an ex-convict, an ex-drug addict, run by ex-gang members. And that's just an example of how uh, the Mexican government hasn't had the ability to provide enough social infrastructure to help the, their, the citizens affected by what's going on in the drug war. Uh, I think that in the media, we need to understand that uh, we need to see both sides of any equation. This man is believed to be part of the Sinaloa cartel. He was heavily armed. He was killed by the Mexican military. We need to understand that in any war, uh, both sides are doing the killing, not, not just the cartels, but it's the military as well. And it's state-sponsored killing, actually. Um, in this slide here, we're, we, these are uh, heroin addicts in Tijuana, uh, in Mexico, right across from San Diego County. Many of these men are deportees, and they're using a drug that's very common in Afghanistan as well. Um, I think that narco-trafficking, whether it be in Mexico or Afghanistan, is something that affects all parts uh, of those two countries' societies, their government, corruption, uh, illegal smuggling, uh, using drugs to buy weapons, and it just expands out from there. Uh, this man has been a heroin addict for over 20 years. He's in Juarez. He was just deported from the United States. He got addicted to drugs while he lived in the United States. Uh, these are all track marks on his legs. It just shows the desperation that people will go to when they're addicted. Uh, all his veins have collapsed in his legs and his arms. He's now injecting in his groin because those are the only veins left to inject the heroin. And uh, just to understand how much drugs comes through the border, uh, this is a U.S. Border Patrol uh, just north of Laredo, Texas. They have just uh, made a bust of, of marijuana. This is a very small amount of marijuana. And we have to understand that the, the way you measure or law enforcement tries to measure how much drugs is coming in is what the street price is. And we have record low levels of the street price of drugs right now, of all drugs. The four main drugs are methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine, and marijuana. And I think that uh, understanding the victims, the people who are the addicts and, and treatment policies versus uh, trying to just kill off these, these drug criminals, whether they be in Afghanistan or in Mexico, is, is really the fundamental building block. It's all about building uh, structured fundamental parts of your governance system, of your social infrastructure that your government can provide to the people, which will create a, a wall, a dam, between them falling to the, 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 the parts uh, of criminality that will degrade your country or will build your country.